Well, you couldn't go anywhere without being recognized, but also without, without being put upon, you know. Yeah. People used to s cut pieces out of the sweaters. Uh, we're on stage one night and I'm looking, Tommy Makem is looking down kind of funny and trying, he's trying to sing a song. And I looked down to see what was happening. There was a girl stealing his shoelaces. <laughs> Uh, I woke up in a hotel in, in London one morning, and of course, it used to be all Irish girls were the maids. You yes, know. chambermaids, yeah. Uh, oh, we had a big night the night before. We'd been playing the Royal Albert Hall and had a big party afterwards. And I woke up in the morning, you know, and I heard this sound. Tis, tisn't, tis, tisn't. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all the maids all around the bed. All in the room, and they tease him, tease him. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, on, and on a Friday night, I understand that the telegram would come through from one Hugh Hefner to say, would you gentlemen like to join me in the Playboy Mansion? Yeah. Is that, is well, that the case? Did you all arrive up to the mansion? We were under contract to the Playboy clubs for a number of years. OK. And uh, it was so soul-destroying. We, re uh. we had to buy... We bought the contract out eventually. Did you? You know, it was and such a sleaze, sleazy, phony life. But um, it wasn't just us. Even after we broke the contract, or got out of the contract, yeah. um, Hefner would invite all the entertainers who were in Chicago on a Thursday or Friday night, whatever it was, after their shows to go to the mansion. And there'd be huge big trestle tables full of every kind of imaginable food, you know. And coats of armour down along the walls. It was all done in medieval, mock medieval style. Mm. But the, I used to love to go there. He had a... Well, you went in the door and there was a champagne fountain. And they had these little champagne glasses. I remember the first time we were there, he said, we don't drink out of... We're Irish. Tom, my brother Tom, you know. <laughs> Macho man. We don't drink out of those things. Get us tankards. And they did, and they kept them there for every time we went. You know, these big yeah. tankards. And we'd fill them up at the champagne fountain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what was great about it was uh, down at the end of the baronial hall, there was a stone cavern like staircase. And you went down this winding stairs into the underground, and there was a huge swimming pool with an island in the middle of it and a waterfall coming down, and under the waterfall, a cave. And you could swim into the cave where people couldn't see you with, with a girl and things like <laughs> but, uh, that. Just sorry, Liam, we, we actually lost you there for a minute. <laughs> you want to see the twinkle in his eye this close? <laughs> But you're back in the room, back in the room. You were moving in such extraordinary circles at the time, and I want to show our viewers uh, a little scene where you were playing for President John F. Kennedy. And uh, this, is, this is a lovely piece of archive. I think you'll enjoy this. I love it. You know, there was a time in America when Irish immigrants, like the four of us here, had a sort of a rough time. That was uh, before the... Uh... <laughs> but... Uh... <laughs> How some ever. Uh, this song is about some people who came and got a rather black welcome. Uh, I think all things considered, uh, some of them didn't do too badly. <laughs> When, 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 you look at, when you look at that, Liam, I, I just with the, see Tommy Makem and so on, and who passed away in the summertime. And yeah. how, how, how were you about that? Was that a tough time for you? Or well, it's always tough to be the last man standing, you know? In, in a way, you feel very, very lucky 
But uh, there are so many times when something comes to mind and I say, what was that fellow's name? Or what was that time? Or how was the time we were down in Florida with the Playboy Club? Who was playing? And I'd pick up the phone to call Paddy or Tom or Tommy Makem or... Yeah. And uh, there's no one to call. You know, that's, that's tough. But I do remember a short day after that, actually, we were down in Florida at the opening of the new Playboy Club. Uh, it was the first... <laughs> no, this is... Not, not that kind of a story. Yeah. Uh, it was the first uh, club south of the Mason-Dixon line in America that was integrated, racially yes. integrated. And um, it was a very big deal that black people could actually go to this club, you know, and sit at the bar with white people. Yes. And it turned out that the sheriff of Dade County was uh, Irish American, you know, toting the gun. He, was, uh, he brought his entire posse, they call him, still called him a posse. <laughs> um, and their wives to the show one night um, and invited us out. He really made a big deal of it. He invited us out to the bar for a drink afterwards, spotted up the drinks on the counter. And um, I said to him, what do you think of, of this setup? You know, this first time it's been racially integrated. Well, he said, son, you know, there was a nigger at the bar over there. He said he wouldn't be there for long. So I took the drink that he'd ordered for me. And I leaned over the bar and I poured it down the sink. And I turned the glass upside down on the counter. And I said, Sheriff, I don't drink with people like you. And as I walked away, I honestly felt that I might get a bullet in the back. Did you? Yeah. It was a, it was a tricky time. Do you, can I ask you a slightly more, more flippant question just after a story like that, but it's, do you guys think that you might have been the first rappers? <laughs> <laughs> do you actually think you might have? I am thinking of going back to rap again. <laughs> do you think it's time to return to rapping? Rap started, most people don't know this, rap started in Donegal. <laughs> and we were the first ex exponents of it. In what sense? Back in 1950s. Listen to this, if this is not rap, okay. what is? There was Johnny McAdoo and McGee and me and a couple of two or three went on a spree one day. We had a bob or two, which we knew how to blew in the beer and just be true. We all fell day. We visited McCann's, McLean's, Humpty Dance. We then went into Swans, our stomachs fought the pack. We ordered out a feed, we did need, we did need. We finished to a speed, but we still fell slack. Johnny McAdoo turned red, white, and blue. <laughs> 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 you know, I've been shocked very rarely on this show, but, uh, <laughs> or maybe all the time, but that really beats them. That's brilliant. You have uh, the Liam Clancy tour starting in the local in Dungarvan on the 8th of April. Um, yeah. You're all over Ireland, April, May and June. I'll be coming to see you in Dublin. I'm a great fan, admirer of yours. I think you should know that by this stage. And the National Concert Hall is nearly sold out. So Nearly sold out, and you, of course... And the Cork Opera House and Limerick Concert Hall. All going on there. The Clancy Brothers Festival in carrick on -Sure. That should be fun, too, in yes. June. June 13th to 15th. Early yeah. on, are. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of our most welcome guests on top of tonight, Mr Liam Clancy. Thank you.